Doing drag and drop is very, very tricky uh, in Flash and you need to be very careful with the code. What I've done here is to produce a document that has four layers on it, an actions layer, a text layer, shapes layer and a target layer. And we've produced some objects. Obviously the object of this is to move them to the correct places. Now each of these on the shapes layer, if you start with a triangle, has been turned into a movie clip and the movie clips have been called um, triangle underscore MC and it's a movie clip or square underscore MC and so on and circle underscore MC each one is a movie clip now doubly important is the fact that each one of these when it appears on the objects layer or the shapes layer also has an instance name it's been shown there in the property inspector triangle MC and so on now I've called the movie clips peg triangle and the instance name triangle underscore MC just to keep them separate but it's the instance names that are really important on this occasion then the same with the square and the same with the circle now if you then move on to the target layer similarly three movie clips each one called target, triangle target or square target with an underscore and each one having an instance name which is target square or target circle or tra target triangle. Whatever instance name you put you've got to make sure that goes into the code later on. Now the object is obviously to be able to move the triangle to the triangle space, circle to the circle and the square to the square. We've also got some text there, which on a text layer, which is set as dynamic text down here in the property inspector because we want it to change. We want it to give a message when we get it right and a different message when we get it wrong. And the instance name for that we've called reply underscore text because that too will need to be put into some HTML code in a moment or two. OK. Let's have a look now at the putting in the code on the actions layer. If we go to the actions layer itself, looking here at the shapes and the targets again just to check what the object of this is, moving a peg to a target and so on. Now let's put in the code for that. Go to the actions layer bring up your actions and your property inspection. You see I've already typed the code in here. On the written tutorial you can see very clearly what this is but it's really important to get the instance names correct. I've done it for square here first as it turns out. You can see that what it's asking the code to do is to on press of the instance square underscore MC we're going to be able to move the square and we're going to on release be able to release it so that it stays where it is. Now the bits of green code there, I'll come back to in a moment, that's um, lettering to go with the dynamic text. But in the tutorial it shows you how to put in the first bit of code. And then once you've got that code, obviously you can copy and paste it and change all the triangles where it says triangle to square, where it says square to circle, it'll make it work for all of them. Just to show you um, that that works. As I say, the green lettering is some words which will appear on the dynamic text which we'll have a look at later. You can see I've copied that to and changed triangle to square and square to circle in the various places. Let's see whether it works. By pressing Ctrl and F8 we can move the triangle it'll go to its correct place and we'll get a little message saying well done, that's right. If we put it in the wrong place, sorry try again. Now just to go back to the code you'll see that the green lettering is where we've put in that reply text and again on the written tutorial that's copied for you you can see exactly how to put it in but be careful if it's not copied exactly correctly with the correct brackets and semicolons then it simply won't work. In the next tutorial you'll see how to lock them in place.